Isaiah chapter 8. Then the Lord said to me, take a large tablet and write on it in common characters belonging to Mahashalal Hashbaz. And I will get reliable witnesses, Uriah the priest and Zechariah, the son of Jeberkiah, to attest for me. And I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, call his name Maharshalal Hashbaz. For before the boy knows how to cry, my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again, because this people has refused the waters of Shiloh that flow gently and rejoice over Rezin and the son of Remaliah. Therefore, behold, the Lord is bringing up against them the waters of the river, mighty and many, the king of Assyria and all his glory. And it will rise over all the channels and go over all its banks. And it will sweep on into Judah. It will overflow and pass on, reaching even to the neck. And its outspread wings will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Be broken, you peoples, and be shattered. Give ear, all you far countries. Strap on your armor and be shattered. Strap on your armor and be shattered. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word, but it will not stand. For God is with us. Well, in many ways, chapter 8 and through to the beginning of chapter 9 uh, deal with the same events as chapter 7. They deal with judgment on Ahaz and Judah for trusting Assyria, but they also point to salvation. Uh, there's the note of darkness of chapter 8, followed by the note of light in uh, chapter 9. And there are three uh, Oracles in chapter 8, three uh, paragraphs introduced by the Lord spoke to me or the Lord said to me. And then the end of the chapter is a reflection on um, the meaning of those oracles. So firstly, in verses 1 to 4, we have a name and its meaning. And again, this is very similar to chapter 7, uh, talking about a son and his name. And some people say, well, this is actually the, the promise in uh, chapter 7, verse 14. The difference is this uh, sign is uh, a public sign, whereas the sign in chapter 7 was a private sign for, uh, for Ahaz. So I think there's uh, continuity in theme, um, but I think it's a, different, uh, it's a different sign. So Isaiah is uh, told that he will have a son uh, whose name is uh, to be Maha Shalal Hashbaz, which is one of my favorite Bible names. And uh, we have uh, four sons if we had a fifth son. I would try and persuade uh, my wife uh, to call him uh, Maha Shalal Hashbaz. Uh, it means swift to the spoil, quick to the, to the plunder. And it is a, a sign. It'll be a sign. The name of, of Isaiah's son will be a sign to, uh, is, uh, to Judah that um, uh, Assyria uh, will come and uh, defeat uh, Damascus and defeat um, uh, Israel, the northern kingdom. And then in verses 5 to 10, uh, we have uh, the, the uh, imagery of a rising river. And uh, again, the Lord speaks to Isaiah, because this people have refused, verse 6, the waters of Shiloh, uh, a pool in Jerusalem. So uh, they've refused to trust in the Lord and rather they have rejoiced over. And I think the understanding, certainly Barry Webb in his commentary suggests this, the understanding is they've rejoiced over the defeat of uh, Rezin, uh, the king of um, the king of uh, D Damascus. So uh, they've rejoiced over the defeat of their enemies by Assyria. So they've put their trust in Assyria rather than in uh, the Lord. And because of that, they've done that, because they haven't trusted uh, the, the gentle stream of God's salvation, this raging river that they put their trust in is going to come and sweep them away. And that's the imagery in the rest of this uh, little section. And um, verse 8, this, this raging river of Assyria in all its glory will sweep on into Judah. It will overflow and pass on, reaching even uh, to the neck. And uh, the people will be broken. They'll be shattered. But even here, there's a note of hope. Uh, twice we have this idea of God with us. O Emmanuel, verse 8, or uh, end of verse 10, uh, for God is with us. Uh, I think that's pointing to this note of hope that's developed in uh, chapter 9. Uh, the third image is uh, in verses 11 to 15 of the stumbling stone. And uh, this is a message to Isaiah himself, 
personally not to follow the way of uh, the people. Verse 12, not to call conspiracy what this people calls conspiracy, not to fear what they fear or dread what they dread, but to trust in uh, the Lord's verse, thir- the Lord, verse 13. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. He is the one that you are to trust. He'll be a sanctuary for you, even though he'll be a stumbling block for those outside uh, 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 in the rest of Israel and Judah. And again, we have this idea of a remnant. There'll be Isaiah and um, uh, those with him, his uh, his disciples, and uh, they uh, are to trust in the Lord and they form the remnant of uh, God's people. And uh, that idea is um, developed of a stumbling stone, obviously, in the rest of uh, the Bible and into the New Testament, that Jesus himself, uh, you trust in him and he's your rock. If you don't trust in him, he is the stumbling stone. He is the uh, the thing that will cause you to be judged is how you respond to the Lord Jesus. Uh, verses 16 to 22 uh, talk about the gathering uh, darkness. And uh, again, uh, Isaiah is to uh, tell this uh, to his disciples. And uh, he and they are to wait for the Lord, verse 17. Uh, I will wait for the Lord. Verse 18, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents in Israel. So there, this, there is this idea of children functioning as Signs In the extreme case we saw in chapter 7 for Ahaz, but even in this chapter we've seen um, with uh, Mahashalal Hashbaz, and, and last chapter Isaiah's other son, Ashir Jashub, uh, a remnant will, um, will repent. So you can see all of that floating around. You can see why this would be um, something that Matthew would pick up uh, and see uh, the birth of, of um, uh, Mary's son, or God's son really, as being the ultimate uh, sign. So there is this uh, growing uh, darkness um, as um, people reject God um, as, as the one, uh, not, not just to, to trust in, but they reject him as uh, the one who um, testify, uh, from whom they can get revelation. And so they turn to mediums and, and necromancers. Uh, but Isaiah is very clear, verse 20, to the teaching and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to the word, it is because they have no dawn, no light. And, you know, that, that is true at any time. Uh, it is true for us that uh, people who don't teach according to your to God's word uh, do not have uh, the light. And uh, uh, the, the, the chapter ends with this uh, picture of uh, thick darkness, uh, gloom of anguish, picture of judgment. Again, in the New Testament, uh, that kind of darkness being cut out from uh, from God's presence is the place of darkness. But we know that the light is coming uh, in chapter uh, 9. Uh, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great uh, light. And again, that's picked up in the New Testament. Uh, you can see that Isaiah deals with kind of fundamental concepts of trusting the Lord and not trusting in uh, human beings, in uh, going to the Lord and his word for revelation to understand the world and and. You can see how clearly um, it uh, foreshadows what we have in the New Testament. And it's no uh, accident that Isaiah is one of the most uh, popular books in the New Testament, popular Old Testament books for New Testament writers uh, to draw from, uh, because there's so much uh, kind of rich uh, theology here that anticipates uh, the gospel of uh, the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus, uh, the one whom we trust in and whom we Uh, look to to understand you, uh, but who is a stone of stumbling for those who do not believe in him. Uh, Father, we pray that our uh, trust uh, would be in him and uh, in your peaceful presence uh, rather than trusting in the nations around us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.